Hi, it's Matt Bricks, and today I have my overhead valve head tutorial. And since I'm not doing the engine part because it's pretty self-explanatory and it's super simple, but if you guys really want details about it, you guys can look back at my other uh, videos because I did a lot of footage on them. And uh, so it's pretty simple. I mean, you just have, you have your cylinder walls encased around there, and then you have your piston, of course, and you have your crankshaft, and then gears running to your camshaft, and then linkages and your linkage to your uh, rocker arm and then you have a big flywheel now I used uh, a dragster tire this thing but um you could use something similar to that like two bike tires or like um, some sort of big tire like that but um, if you really are in a pinch you can use two of these but um they're kind of bad and not as good um, but if you have three of them or two of them, then it'll run. But uh, I just say that out there, right? Because um, I know that these things can be really finicky, especially if you don't have a big enough flywheel, especially if you don't have a big enough flywheel. Because it won't create a full revolution and it won't run. Because all the spring rate of the um, rubber band will just not do that whatsoever. So anyways, um, I'm doing the harder part, which is making the head part. So I'm making a tutorial about that. Um, so, yeah. Well, um, just a quick disclaimer. Of course, since you guys are rebuilding my head, um, just give me credit if you guys are going to actually do some improvements on it and, uh, submit to YouTube. So, if you guys are going to be using <clears throat> the exhaust part, and then give me credit, but also give, uh, LL's credit to, um, because he actually had the idea of building the head. Um, so... I did make the valve, I didn't make the um, exhaust part, and I didn't make um, the improved rocker arm and stuff like that, but he did make the original idea, and he did make the overall head shape, and um, so, stuff like that, so yeah. So make sure I give him credit, and give me a credit as well. Well, I'm going to be building on that part there, and I'm going to scoot this down here. Oh, wait, real quick. To do a pan over. Uh, what exactly you guys are going to need? Alright. So, that's all the stuff I used in order to build it. <clears throat> now, um, some of these uh, 1x4s and 1x2s, I did combine them together and make 1x6s. So, um, just giving you a heads up. So you aren't um, super panicky about, you know, oh, I don't have enough uh, 1x4s and stuff like that. Well, if you have enough 1x6s, um, they'll tell you when you can actually use it. Because, of course, some of the stuff I, you actually do need um, 1x2s and 1x4s. Anyways, uh, let's get started. Like I said, building this qu quadrant over here. All right, so first thing we need is two 2x6 two plates. And two two by four plates. And I can do a square like that. I'm gonna bring you up um, down. Well, I'll keep you up here. But I'm gonna zoom in a little bit like that. All right. So you're gonna have that square there. All right. Then you're gonna create a perimeter of one stud around there with blocks. So. Kind of hard to do this because it's all loose but whenever you have it all together it should be like that okay then you take that there so you have a one stud around the perimeter of that then now that it is all together and not all loosely to put together you put some one by two plates on the corners there not the ones with the two, uh, two by twos, only the two by sixes. All right. So then you take, um, you do another layer on top of that, but this time you're gonna you're gonna um, keep one of it open like that. All right. You have four studs of air gap in there, and then you're gonna take a one by six. You're gonna put. A one by four plate on top of it, and a one by four plate 
or one by four tile top of it and then you're gonna stick it in the groove like that so you have a air gap of a plate all right then you fill the rest of it in like so okay so now you built your bottom of the head flip it over to the top all right the top you're gonna do the same thing every gap in there but you gotta keep note that your exhaust on the side here um so you're you're facing this way your exhaust should be to the left you're gonna put that in there so you have an air gap in here that's your intake and your exhaust right here all right you can put it wherever you want but that's the way i, I do it so um you guys can modify it or change it as you go but that's the way i'm gonna build it be building it then you stick two two by six plates on top of there and then you have a two by six plate but with these holes in them like there stick them top of there so you've made your intake right here and your exhaust and your bottom all right you take two two by six plates and make a set of them like that all right, and you stick them on top of here. See so you, your your intake here, and then you have your you know, like that. All right, then you're gonna take um, two one by two plates or top bricks, and you're gonna make a set of them. Okay, then you place them like that in there. Oh, real quick. Um, before you do that, you want to fill in the holes. Since you have all these holes in them, you're going to fill some of them in. You're going to put a one by 2 tile in there. And there. So you fill in some of the holes in there. That's not leaking as bad. Then you're going to take one by 2 bricks, stuck on top of there. So you have that. Then you're gonna take a another two by six plate with the holes in them. You're gonna flip it over. You're gonna put a one by four brick on top of there, and another one by four brick on top of there. Then you're gonna stick it onto here, like that. All right. So that's what you have there. You have your supports. These are called um your valve guides. So your valve guides in there. And then this is called your valve seat in there where it actually seals against the bottom of the hole. Okay, now you're gonna make your valve. Now you can make your valve. Um, so you take, I have a 12 stud long axle. Then you're gonna take a one by two with an axle type hole in there. Then you're gonna put some one by two plates on each side that. and then another one by two plate on there and a one by four plate on top of that and then you're gonna take a one by two tile on top of there so you made, you made your valve now and then from keeping it to sliding off of the um the valve stem this is called the valve stem you're gonna take two half bushings and you're going to make that so that's a really tight that makes a really tight um thing so it doesn't slide off as well then if you just had one <clears throat> you can have just one in there but if you have full throttle on there um you have full suction it'll just slip it right off and also you got to worry about lubrication problems if you lubricate and the um, lube gets in there your wd-40 whatever you have in there It'll actually make this more smoother and just slip off easier. So you got to keep that in note. Um, all right, then you're going to take you have your flat part here. You're going to have it facing your hole for your exhaust. So you're going to stick it in your, your uh, metal hole in there. Okay, so make sure that slides up and down easy. If it doesn't slide up and down easy, you've made a mistake. Or it and it will not work so either you made a mistake or your 
um, bricks are too frictiony and you need to swap them out with newer bricks. All right. Um, so as you can see in there, there's quite a bit of a gap as you can see. So there's a nice size gap. If I can get my camera to focus, there we go. Um, there's a pretty nice size gap in there. Now what you can do is if you're, if you're, um, okay with modifying Lego bricks, especially one by two, then you can modify a one by two, sand it down to the right size and have that so it's almost flush, but have it still go up and down pretty easily. And that's, that's the best thing you can have is that setup there. And also you want to have it smoothly going up and down because that gap that I'm showing you, um, if you put a regular one by two in there, it will not work. That gap in there is um, is less than a one by two plate, um, but bigger. Yeah, so you can't you can't put it in there. You can substitute that. All right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to have you want to put a half bushing on the top of there as a stop so that your valve doesn't go all the way down. All right, and you want to set your stop so that it's barely covering that on the bottom there. So that's barely on there. So it doesn't stick past it. But I have, I have it stick past it a little bit. So that's gonna be your stop. So whenever whenever you set your, um, whenever you do your, um, to find your position of your rocker arm, and whenever it's going too far, you'll feel that stop being like pushed down on and that's when you know that you um that's going too far so this is that's the reason why you have a stop in there all right next thing you do is you take a two by two brick with built-in holes on each side and then you'll slide it down so that your your intakes here and you have your uh, pins going the opposite way so your intake's going this way, you have your pins going this way. Push it down. Okay. Not so it's flush with this bottom, not so it's flush with the stop on there. Just so that's going down enough that you can put this bevel gear or whatever you choose on top of there. So it's more flat. Okay. And then it should be flush with that brick. It should be flush with that bevel gear, whatever you choose to put on there. All right, make sure it's smooth again. Again, so it's, as you can see, it's pretty great, uh, pretty good. All right, next thing you want to do is you want to make your side, your side walls, okay? So this is where I'm talking about you can substitute um, one by sixes uh, from the uh, one by fours and one by twos. So you take, um, four one by six uh, bricks, or what I'm doing right now is I'm staggering one by fours and one by twos like that for the side walls here. So it's like that. Okay, then you can make that on the other side. So, do that. And Bricks there. Okay, so you have your other side, put it on like that. All right, then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take, um, you're gonna take these one by eight, I call them bearing bricks but this is what they look like, but I call them bar bearing bricks, but whatever you know what it is, then that's what you, of course, have put on there. All right, so your intake's gonna be here. You're gonna put that to the side like that. Okay, so it's sticking out to the right of your hole, and you're gonna put the other side, of course. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take two one by six um, plates. You're gonna stack on top of each other and then you're gonna make a set of them. 
And since, of course, I don't have um, those, then I'm gonna use one by fours. Oh. And here's a perfect demonstration of why, of like, what's the problem with having these cylinder walls or these side walls here. You have to be careful because if you put too much side pressure on here or not enough support, it'll just shoot off to the side. Or if you put too much side pressure on here, it'll just crush inwards. It'll just flatten out and you definitely don't want that. Um, so now you have that on there. Get my camera to focus. Already has focus. All right. So we take a one by two brick with a hole, pin hole in it. You're gonna t put a friction pin there. You're gonna make a set of them. Okay. All right, then you put them in the middle of here and here. All right, so you have facing it inwards. All right, then you're gonna take, you're gonna fill it in with one by twos on each side. All right, then you're gonna point now where you can put your, um, <clears throat> your rubber band or your, uh, your valve spring. So what I use is I use a crazy contraptions rubber band. Um, so I'm not sure what you use, what you guys have. This is what I use. All right. So whatever works best for you, you want, um, as little as friction or a little as spring brake as possible. But just enough that it will seat against the bottom there. <clears throat> so now they have that. So I cradled it. I don't know if you caught that or not. But what I do is I have a trick is that I lay it on top of the pins. So it cradles. Then I take the two sides. Then I pull it down underneath the brick part. Not the pin part. The brick part. All right. And... While you're at it, you also want to make sure that this is seated on the bottom there. If it's not seated, then it will not seal, of course, whenever you put the um, vacuum on. All right. Now, then you can make sure this is all together. Uh, make sure this won't come apart. You take two one by 6 plates on top of there. And also you have clearance for your rocker arm. Take a six by six plate, put on top of there, and now you made your head. So now we're gonna move on to making your um, your rocker. Okay. So now you're gonna take a nine long beam. You're gonna take some friction pins. You're gonna put in the first pin and the fourth pin down, and then you have this piece here. You have a five by three. Um, nine degree angle piece. I'm not sure what these are called, but you put it, um, the second pin down from the first pin of the one by nine beam. You have that. Then you take a three long beam, put pins on each side of it, and then you're going to put that in the gap, the top of there. So now you created this. Okay. Then... Here comes a tricky part. So I have an eight long axle. Um, you can use a six long axle if you want to, but what I use it, uh, why I use this eight long axle is because then you can judge by the side here if this is um, in the middle or not. Because if it's a six long, then you gotta have to reach over, if to look over at each corner of the hole and make sure it's um, parallel or flush with it i guess so you take your axle then you stick it in the second pin over if i get this to focus the lighting is horrible there you go so you stick a um stud what a one stud wide uh bushing in there then you're going to stick it in the third pin down from there to there. And then here comes the tricky part. So you have a one stud wide bushing. You got to stick it in there and also shove the axle in there as well. And it takes some time and practice, but 
you can get it put in there. There you go. All right, so it's like that. And then, of course, I can judge by each side so that this is flat or it's equal on both sides. And you also want to make sure that this is freely spinning so you can see it's equal on both sides. It spins very nicely. So you have some play in there. You have play in the... Um, in the uh, rocker arm. So, just that so that it has the least amount of friction as possible. All right, then you made your head. So, see, it opens and closes. Make sure your thing all, uh, covers it up. And then, yeah, so that's my head. Um, quite simple when you know what you're doing. It's all just simple bricks. There's no real uh, super hard, uh, simple, um, I guess, uh, rare parts. The only, rare, the only rare parts that are in here is, or parts hard to get, would be um, just the just this 2x2 two two brick with pins in each side built in and the 12 stud long axle. And that's pretty much about it. So... But yeah, that's my head. Um, so there's a tutorial. Um, for the start of the tutorial, I'm going to have to do a lot of work because I stealed some parts to make this head um, off the starter. So I'm gonna have to rebuild the starter because I forgot how to rebuild it because I was making a couple attempts how to make the starter, but um, it didn't work so well. So, and I forgot how to build it. So I'm gonna have to rebuild it, um, learn how to do it. And then um, I have to make the tutorial for you guys. But my uh, tutorial was like 30 minutes long, 40 minutes long. So it's quite boring. But if you guys really want a tutorial, then I'll make it. So, yeah. Well, this is my tutorial. So, bye.